Welcome back to another episode of No Time To Be Hungry. Today, I am in Lori's house, Lori, Boat Life Lori. I the know. famous YouTube channel, Boat Life Lori, you gotta check it out. So tonight, we're having meatloaf. I know that sounds like meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf is boring. Everybody knows how to make meatloaf. But Lori was telling me about her meatloaf, and I was like, wow, that sounds really cool. Very interesting. We're gonna have to make a video on this because I've never had meatloaf like that before in my life. So, so Lori has decided to allow us into her kitchen and show us how to make Lori's special meatloaf. So anyway, enough talking. Let's see what's in the ingredients. What we have here, she says, is what she uses pretty much all the time is... Ground turkey, ground beef, and two eggs. And two eggs. That stays the same every time. When you guys make meatloaf, there's always a filler. So when my kids were small and I was making meatloaf, I would probably put like half of a loaf of bread inside the meatloaf as a filler, along with my other little special ingredients. But I was interested about the can of soup. So tell us about the can of soup. So in my meatloaf, there's always a can of soup and it varies. It just varies on what I have in the pantry. It's never a cream of anything soup because that would be gross, but it might be a beef broth. It might be a chicken broth. It might be a vegetable beef soup. Today, what I have in the pantry is beef consomme condensed soup. So that's what's going in the meatloaf today. I don't think I've ever had beef. I don't know if I could even say, say that. It. You can say it. <laughs> do it. Consomme. Wasn't that great? Consomme. <laughs> and what do we have here? When I'm making meatloaf, I always go through my pantry and look for anything that has started to get stale, whether mm. it be crackers or veggie chips. In this case, it's some veggie snacks. Wow, okay. So this is going to be like healthy meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start with healthy. Okay. And if this doesn't create enough of that dry ingredient that you need to make it stick together and become a loaf, then I will add a few breadcrumbs. Okay, very cool. So she's going to show, is that pretty much it, right? That's it's it. just the uh, process of making it. So that's it. All right, let's see how it's done. Let's do it. First thing she's going to do is ground up the veggie, I'm going to call it the veggie filler chips. Now we're going to use all these tools because we don't ever touch raw meat. That's disgusting. Yeah, she's got some kind of thing with raw meat. I don't even want to know. Especially <laughs> not when I have the knife. But it's a little bitty knife. I don't think I could do a lot of damage with this. Speaking of raw meat, we did wash our hands prior to, yes. uh, to making this concoction with the beef consomme. <laughs> Beef consomme. Con consomme, okay. It's not so fancy. Consomme. <laughs> Is this the part where you're gonna get sick? No. Okay. me to assist you. I'm okay, I'm okay. Beef, consomme. Now let's get this meatloaf party started.
disgusting, but good consistency. I'm just gonna add a little bit of breadcrumbs to help it hold together a little bit better. What are you doing, bud, huh? You wanna help? <laughs> you ready? No? Alright, I'll do it. I have thumbs. And in goes the meatloaf into the pan. Or we're not calling it meatloaf yet, right? It's just meat. It's meatloaf. It's been loafed. <laughs> What about the onions? I sprinkled the onions on top. Oh, okay. So I have to ask you, what's the weirdest soup that you've ever put in this uh, meatloaf? Um, probably a beef and barley soup. Beef or and no, barley. The chunky sirloin vegetables that have the little burgers in it. <laughs> Have you ever put chicken noodle soup in there? I've never done anything with a noodle. Okay. But I'll try it. Interesting. So, I guess you could put any kind of soup, right? Any kind of soup. Okay. A broth soup though, right? Not necessarily. Just, okay. I've, I've used a tomato-based soup. What um, about like a... There's no cream of anything because that would be disgusting. <laughs> Um, alphabet soup. I have used alphabet soup. Really? When the kids were little, I would use alphabet soup and I would challenge them to find their name. All the letters. Wow, of so the name. alphabet's held together they in the all meatloaf. Held together in the meatloaf. Interesting. There you go, guys. Alphabet <laughs> meatloaf soup for your kids. Along with this meal that Lori's preparing for us, she's also gonna make some homemade macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese. Very cool. So, oven. We need to preheat our oven at all? So I don't preheat the oven for a meatloaf, but I do plug it in the temperature gauge. So I have the thermometer in there. And now we are going to... Okay, there it is. So we're gonna bake it at 350 and it's gonna bake till it's 165 degrees. And how long is it gonna bake for, do you know? Uh, just however long it takes for the temperature probe to say. It's ready. There. Okay, very good. Awesome. On a not so fancy <laughs> oven. <laughs> On a not so fancy oven, 350 degrees, about 35 minutes. Okay. There and then use a temperature gauge. Okay. And the inside, the, the inside temperature needs to be 170. 170 degrees. Okay. Very cool. Lori, that's a lot of random cheese. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to make the macro. Well, actually, she's going to make the macaroni. And I'm so interested in the process. So we've got just macaroni. Elbows, elbows, butter, a lot of random cheese, and this some. All the leftover cheeses that I have in the fridge. Some crackers. Okay. And what's in the jar? Paprika. Paprika. Okay. Paprika so, okay, boil some water and cook the noodles, right? Got it going. Let's see what's happening. What do you want, dog? You want to play? Hey, JC. <laughs> Boiled macaroni. 
So it, it's, you said it's not all the way cooked, right? It's not all the way cooked because okay. I'm still going to bake it. So I cook it about two minutes less than whatever the package directions are for uh -huh. al dente. Okay. So now I'm going to make the cheese sauce. And that starts with butter. Because butter makes everything better. And it goes about three tablespoons of butter. And you guys, don't forget to subscribe to Lori's channel. It's Boat Life Lori. It's about boats, it's about life, and it's about Lori. <laughs> <laughs> it's about all kinds of things, but it, what it's not about is cooking, right? It is not about cooking. <laughs> maybe some random, uh, you know, life cooking videos on the boat, maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm melting the butter to start the cheese sauce. So I'm gonna do that on low heat. So what are we measuring? I want to have equal parts butter and flour okay. to start thickening the sauce. So I have three tablespoons of butter, so I'm gonna put in three tablespoons of flour. Okay. After that, you measure everything with your card. I'm curious, I've never used flour for macaroni and cheese. Strange. You've never used soup for meatloaf too. Either, so. <laughs> no, I've never done that. <laughs> I'm so excited. do it on a really low heat so that it doesn't start to cook. Random cheese. Our random cheese. Just whatever you have left over. We have Gouda. We have Swiss and Gruy. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Come on, do it, do it. Are you asking me? I said Swiss. Gruyer. 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 It's Gruyer. Gruyer. Yeah, Gruyer. Gruyer. Happy Gruyer. Again, I don't measure anything. Okay. Are you looking for a certain consistency of the cheese? Yes. I just want it to be a creamy, cheesy sauce mm -hmm. that I can mix with my pasta. So I'm gonna let that melt a little bit. And I throwing this Gouda cheese away because we're past the expiration date on that. Don't eat expired food. Unless you do, that's up to you, but you're not going to get expired food. I thought food. cheese was already expired. It probably is, but <laughs> you know, it comes with a date for the reason. It comes with a date for a reason. Yeah. And the reason is probably just because they want me to buy more and I'm okay with that. I'm not eating anything past the date. I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of paprika to the sauce before I put the macaroni in so that it gets incorporated into everything and that flavor kicks in a little bit before I add the macaroni. Much better, that's getting good. So I've got a good creamy, cheesy sauce. So I'm going to add my macaroni back to it. 
That looks really, really, really good. Now she's gonna put it in a casserole dish and we're gonna bake it with some crumbs, right? Gonna make the topping. Always spray your baking dish because it's cheese. It will stick to everything. are pretty well incorporated but you can still see some of those chunks of butter and that is going to give your mac and cheese a really rich taste. Now I'm going to put some parmesan cheese into the crumb topping and I like parmesan for the crumb topping because it doesn't get as melty so it gets that crispy crunchy almost crunchy crust right on top of the bacon. Long. Uh, so the meatloaf is done, and then we'll check it out, see if it needs to go in a minute longer. Yay. All right, so we've hit 165 degrees on the meatloaf, and I've got the bubbles coming up to the top on the mac and cheese, so it's time to pull the meat thermometer out and turn on the broiler and crisp up everything on the top. And there it is, out of the oven. So we've got our meatloaf, our baked mac and cheese, and some Parmesan green beans that I picked up from the grocery store and threw in the air fryer. And the air fryer. I gotta get me an air fryer when we get to Thailand. I don't know if they got one that nice though, maybe. Okay, here we go. Lori's famous meatloaf. Mm -hmm. Yay. Wow. It's very good, Lori. Very good. What yeah. you think? Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Well, Lori, thank you very much for sharing this recipe for us. It's very, very good. Thank you. I can't wait for the leftovers. Oh, wait, no, I can't have any. Can we? <laughs> the leftovers are going for her son. Anyway, guys, I hope you try this recipe. It's really good. Remember, it's your own creation. You can put any kind of soup 
and any kind of fillers that you want in it. But anyway, we'll see you guys on the next No Time To Be Hungry video. Bye. Bye, y'all.